Hello and welcome to JCI Live, Austin, Texas, USA. My name is Craig Gandy and thank you for joining me this evening. It's been a cold week this week in Austin, Texas. Uh, I don't know how the people in the rest of the country do it. Uh, winter lasting two or three days is about uh, all these old bones can handle, but uh, it's been nice and refreshing here in Austin. A lot going on in, in our city this weekend, so be careful out there. There's going to be a lot of people in town, a lot of strangers in town. If you can reach out and help someone that's lost or uh, um, anything you can do to show an act of kindness to a stranger, uh, make sure that you're representing our city well this week because it's going to be an exciting weekend here in Austin. We've also got in our program tonight uh, two ladies from the Junior League of Austin that are going to bless you. Uh, they've been with us the past few years, uh, different ladies, different chairmen, uh, that uh, what they do in our community is truly outstanding. So stay with us throughout the programming. It is going to be a real fun time tonight. I read an article this week by Bob Jones. Bob is an um, elderly prophet. I've mentioned him a couple of times in the past few years. Uh, almost 90, uh, has heard the Word of God many times, uh, has predicted and, and prophesied truth throughout the nations. But he was sent out an email through Elijah List. This is ElijahList.com this week. Bob was saying that this is a time that many of the churches have fallen prey to a lot of misinformation, a lot of um, no heresy in the body of Christ where you're going to church and church is playing games and not teaching people what they need to know to develop a relationship with Jesus Christ. There are a lot of churches preaching truth, but a lot of churches failing in their commission from God. He says that a lot of people have been gathering that which they think is fruit, but in fact it's a gourd that represents a religious spirit. It looks like a vegetable, but it has death in it. Instead of gathering the fruit of the Spirit, they've been gathering death. When we go to church and we, we hear the Word of God, we need to apply it to our own personal life. I need to, but we need to be learning what Jesus has done for us so that we can enter into that love relationship with God because of the love that Jesus had for our Father. Our Father in Heaven loves us. He loves us because Jesus repaired the breach between God and us so that we could receive His love to love others and to return that love to Him. When we show love to one another, then God is truly allowing us to be all that He's called us to be. It says that the mature in the Lord, is call, the Lord is calling forth a mature remnant to promote them with a new authority. Many people the past few years have gone through a severe testing, gone through a, a time in the desert that you wouldn't wish on your worst enemy, that you wouldn't want to go through again. But God allows us to develop a, um, a, a, a perseverance, a spirit of perseverance within us to overcome all obstacles as they, come, as they were faced with them. When we learn to trust in the Lord every day, in every way, for all the resources, all the ideas, all the wisdom that we need to make a difference in the world around us, then we truly are doing what God's calling us to do. He says that we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God, in a mystery. What people don't realize is that with God we can accomplish all things. Without God we'll only reach a certain level because of not having the wisdom from God. So if you have a project that is too big for you, that you can't wrap your hands around, you can't uh, develop and grow this idea any further than this limit, turn it to God. God, with God, we can attain all things. Without God, we can only reach so high. With God, without God. Always choose to go forth with God because He will give you all the wisdom you need to excel in everything you do. He also says the church has gone through rather severe testing the last six or seven years 
but that time is drawn to an end. Now is the time of closing out the old books and opening new ones. It's the end of one time and the beginning of a new one. Those who have been promoted will become the leaders in the church and they will minister by what they hear from the Holy Spirit. In this promotion there will be an understanding of what God wants done and how to do it. As we turn our hearts to God, don't play the games that many in the church are playing, but turn our hearts to God to reach out to the broken, to reach out to the poor, to reach out to the widows and the orphans, and do the things that God tells us to do in our communities, in our nation, in the world, then we will make that difference that God's called us to do. We don't play games, we don't tickle each other's ears, but listen to the Word of God. All truth comes through the Word of God, the Holy Bible. And when we follow that Word, the good days ahead. The Lord says in, that we are to come together in unity. Bob Jones says it should be like mashed potatoes where we just all mash together to be all one unity of spirit. I like, kind of like that. It's, uh, the thing he closes with says there's a remnant that are going to be called to enter into God's presence in this final day. Those that are looking outside of themselves, those that are trying to be what God has called them to be. People that go that extra mile, don't just work their eight to five and uh, put their feet up on the table the rest of the time. They look for people to help. People like the people at East Austin that were left homeless from the floods. People in the Philippines that are going through their tragedy of the flood. You know, the people in Nigeria that we've talked about, Boko Haram are still causing unrest in Nigeria. There's so much going on around the world that take time to be involved. Take time to pray for those in need. Take time to offer a hand up or hand out to the people that need us in this day and hour. When we do those things, when we make a difference in the lives of those around us, it truly is a blessing to allow God's love to flow through us to others. The days ahead are going to be truly glorious. God says that these are the days that we shall see the glory of the Lord, the excellent, excellency of our God. In Isaiah 35, he talks about the future glory of Zion. These are the days ahead that we're looking forward to. These are the days that as all darkness is rising around us, that we will see the glory of the Lord. These are the days that as we pull everything within us out to share with others, as we allow Jesus and the Holy Spirit to fill us with all light and all understanding, that we will reach out and make a difference throughout the world, that people will be stand in amazement at what's going on. It says, Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened in the days ahead, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. And the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue, tongue of the dumb sing. A highway shall be there, and a road, and it shall be called the highway of holiness. But the redeemed shall walk there, and the ransomed of the Lord shall return, and come to the Zion with singing, with everlasting joy on their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. These are the days that as we've gone through our trials the last six to seven years for some, uh, 20 to 30 years for others, uh, 40 to 60 for others, that we know that these days are coming to a point that all glory is to release the Lord. Great darkness rising on all sides, uh, chaos and misunderstanding, hatred, and where we turn our attention off of these things, and put our attention on the Lord, and He will give us all wisdom to go forth into His love and His glory. If we allow His wisdom to guide us, to lead us on the paths ahead, then we can accomplish great things, great days are ahead for those that love the Lord. The Lord also turned me to Proverbs 31, and this was so fitting because I have ladies that are going to be 
with us tonight uh, that are truly Proverbs 31 ladies. These are ladies that are not only a blessing to their community, but a blessing to their family, to their friends, to their husbands, especially. You know, a lot of times as we husbands are mar that are married to women that uh, uh, take so much of their time to help others, it can be a hardship for a husband to, uh, you know, put the kids to bed or to do the things that uh, men do when their women are those that excel. But the women out there that, uh, and the women that are going to be here tonight are truly a blessing to us men. We love to watch our wives excel in the things they do. It truly blesses us when we know our wives are making a difference in our community and in our nation. So I, uh, when the Lord turned me to Proverbs 31 today, Proverbs 31, 10 to 31, it says, Who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her, so he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good and that her lamp does not go out by night. Her husband is known in the gates. Oh, I'm sorry. She stretches out her hands to the distaff, and her hand holds the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She, <clears throat> she makes linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. These are good things that women do. They are, all, are truly a blessing to the men that, um, that you not only are married to, but to all the people of our community and all the people of our, of our state. We've got a good program. These ladies tonight are going to be truly a blessing to you. Uh, we've got a short video to show of a movie that Maury got in, and uh, we'll be right back with um, the ladies from the Junior League of Austin, and Maury's going to be joining me. Thank you for being with us tonight. God bless you. First Coast Entertainment, Publishing, and Technology. J. Craig Gandy reporting news from Austin, Texas, the entertainment capital of the world. A letter for you just came in the post. For as long as she could remember, Elizabeth dreamed of being a teacher. To our Elizabeth, who has chosen the most noble profession a woman could choose. Thank you, Daddy. But she never imagined she would end up living on the wild frontier. It's west of here, ah, Coal Valley. In the middle of godforsaken nowhere. We all know Elizabeth is afraid of her own shadow. Until she found courage in a hidden family secret. Auntie Elizabeth. When I stepped off the train in Pine Springs, I was greeted by a small, precocious young girl named Pearlie. We finally arrived at the place I would call home. From Motion Picture Corporation of America. Let's begin then, shall we? She was a teacher. Based on the best-selling novel by Jeanette Oak. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. When? When Delaney. Comes an epic new saga. Oh, don't do that, it's gonna cause the... <laughs> It's gonna cause the ash to combust. That spans three generations. Are you sure you're okay? Yes, I'm perfectly all right! There's a very special dance. I was wondering if you might like to accompany me. I accept. When I was reading her diary, 
I found myself desperately wanting to follow in her footsteps. Sometimes life takes a young person on their own path. Experience hope. I'm going. Going where? I'm taking the teaching job at Gold Valley. Friendship. Better to be an adventurer than end up an old school mark. I can't imagine you said that. My best friend. Love. Edward, what are you doing here? I need to see you safely to Coal Valley. May I have this dance? And the power of following your heart. Oh, Edward! Yeah, mm. you know. Yeah. What do we do now? We need to get moving. How? They shoot the horses away. You have feet, don't you, Elizabeth? God's making you stronger, more resilient. You're gonna change the world, Elizabeth, with your gifts. You won't just be teaching them to read and write. You'll be fighting for their future. Maggie Grace, Stephen Amell, Poppy Drayton, When Calls the Heart. Directed by Michael Landon, Jr.